All right, guys, welcome. It is a beautiful sunset here in the Idaho lava fields. Today, we're gonna be looking at products that have been sent to me for review by companies. Here we have the AKGF3 provided to me by Palmetto State Armory. On top, we have a CV Life Eagle Feather 1 to 8 LPVO, which has been sent to me completely for free by CV Life. And of course, I am sitting on top of the Schizo Throne. This amazing camping chair was sent to me by Browning. Uh, Browning makes outdoor gear in a partnership with Alps Outdoors, and they actually sent me some even more gear that I'm gonna go over later, but thank you so much, Browning. I am being sent products for review. Now, don't worry, I'm not joining Leviathan Group or anything like that anytime soon, but I am incredibly grateful that some foolish companies out there are willing to work with a guy who thinks the moon is fake and willing to send him guns, optics, and other camping gear uh, for review. Yeah, we're gonna go up here, just for fun. All right, let's, so, let's go over the project I have for this specific AK. In my current gun, I guess, collection or current arsenal, I have a general purpose AR-15, my 20 inch AR in 5.56. I have a super small PDW AR-15 right in 300 blackout. What is missing? I need a long range rifle. I need a intermediate cartridge rifle for shooting at distance. Now the AK is maybe the worst rifle to pick for this job. However, it is a fun experiment. I'm gonna try and make a modernized Tabuk rifle, forgive the mispronunciation. Now you might ask yourself, what is a Tabuk? Well, super long story short, Back in the good old days of the Soviet Union when comm block weapons were still piping hot and it's all everyone wanted. Of course, the Soviet Union and its allies were using the Dragunov rifle. Other nations were using the PSL and other similar versions of a 7.62x54R semi-automatic sniper rifle. The Soviet Union was unique because they recognized that it, for their military doctrine, they needed a sniper rifle that was semi-automatic, something that could still lay down fire. And what was funny about a lot of those scopes that the Dragunov was using is that they were usually fixed powered scopes. We're talking fixed 4X, fixed 10X optics. They were incredibly dumb, stupid proof, and easy to make, which funny enough makes the CV Life LPVO actually a pretty decent fit. I am by no means claiming that the CV Life LPVO is somehow even a good optic, but I bet it's a lot better than what the Soviets were using. So why am I talking about the Dragunov? This is not chambered in 7.62 by 54R. You're correct. Iraq, which was using Soviet weapons primarily, did not have the budget to get Dragunovs and 7.62 by 54R sniper rifles. So what they did is they basically took RPKs and put scopes on them and then put on a big long flash hider and they basically deem that their DMR, their sniper rifle. Now, just because a nation did it, just because an army made that decision, that doesn't mean it's a good decision. It was a decision made completely out of budgetary constraints. Well, that is exactly what is happening to me. This rifle has been laid on me, it has spoken to me, and I need to give it a job. And the job that I am making this thing do is DMR. So what we're gonna do real quick before the light goes out is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna shoot some targets, at anywhere between 50 and 100 yards just to get a feel for what it's like to shoot an AK with a scope. Let's get to it. I'm wearing my tactical North Face slippers as well. Did I get it? Definitely landing high. Got it that time, I think. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need to adjust the optic just a little more. Man, this thing is just so fun, it's unreal. Oh, safety off. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm landing on it. We'll have to go check and confirm, and that might be super embarrassing, but let's post up a little more stable. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, the 8X on this is really kinda, I don't know, it's like looking through a soda straw. Sick. 
Yeah, so first impressions of the AK, I mean, this is not technically first impressions, I've already shot it. The AK continues to be a lot of fun. The CV life, on the other hand, though, not too impressed. I will say it's performing like other LPVOs I have used. Sick. Unreal. Yeah, this thing's going way high. There we go. <sighs> Man, I love this thing so much! <laughs> Bro. All right. Well, to be fair to myself, I don't know how many of these shots are ones I just put in. So it's not a very good test. So, let me take this back. So dope. All right, guys, so that is my first impressions of the AK GF3 and the CV Life 1 to 8. I don't know if I'm falling in love with this rifle specifically, but I do love the AK platform. As far as LPVOs go, the CV Life has not changed my mind yet about them. In my opinion, I think for most people, a prism optic with a red dot companion, I still think that is the way to go for now. But for my retarded modern to book project, I think this optic is gonna serve just fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a comment and subscribe. Actual formal reviews for these products will come out eventually. And thank you so much again to Browning for sending me camping products that are just so well made and so awesome. If you guys are interested in looking at those, check out the affiliate link below. Thank you guys, have a wonderful day.